The 30 million years of isolation that South America faced led to a great amount of unique species that evolved and could only be found on that continent. In an earlier video, we covered one group of animals like that from the clade Meridiungulata. Today, I want to cover a group of carnivores that are endemic to the continent. These animals are part of the group Sporacidonta. While Sporacidonts are not closely related to members of the order Carnivora, many of these animals do seem very similar to placental carnivores such as cats, weasels, and hyenas. For example, the most iconic Sporacidon, Thylacus smilus, shares a strong resemblance to the saber-toothed cat such as Smilodon and Homotherium. Sporacidonts were only ever found on the continent of South America, and though some basal genera show signs of it having evolved in North America, the evidence linking these animals to members of Sporacidonts was often purely morphological and not strong enough to show phylogenetic relationships. In particular, Sporacidonts were concentrated in the southern part of the continent, in countries such as Argentina and Chile, but northern countries such as Colombia were also common locations where Sporacidonts could be found. In general, Sporacidonts were hypercarnivorous animals, although several genera show signs of it being omnivorous. Since South America had no native carnivore and predators given its geographic isolation, Sporacidonts occupied the niche of larger mammalian carnivores throughout the Cenozoic up until the continent connected to its northern neighbor during the Pliocene. There are many types of Sporacidon carnivores, from weasel-like animals to leopard-like predators to hyena-like bone crackers. There is an early view among scientists that this group first emerged during the late Cretaceous. Some researchers posited many genera from around this period to be part of this group, but there is an overall lack of phylogenetic evidence to be able to support these claims. Sporacidonta evolved in the early Paleocene and lasted up until the early Pliocene. This group of animals has a history of being placed near different branches of the mammalian family tree, such as with many placental mammal groups. However, Sporacidonts were actually a member of Metatheria. Evolving the early Cretaceous, Metatherians differ from other groups of mammals in several ways, most notable of which is with their dentition, such as having four pairs of molars. Metatheria contained a variety of different families of mammals, but the only living group we have of this clade are the marsupials. For a long time, Sporacidonts were viewed to be part of this group, but recently they're more commonly believed to have split off from marsupials right after the extinction of the dinosaurs. The earliest known Sporacidon was actually Myelestes ferox, which evolved during the early Paleocene 63 to 61 million years ago. This was a small animal around 1 to 2 kilograms in weight and was likely arboreal. Other early members of this group include the early Eocene Patane as well as the middle Eocene Nemolestes. From these early members, Sporacidonta began to diversify and branch out into five main groups. These groups are Honda Delphidae, Hathliocynidae, Proborhyenidae, Thylacosmilidae, and Borhyenidae. The first group, Honda Delphidae, contains members who are more taxonomically distant from the rest of Sporacidonta. For example, there is Honda Delphis of the Middle Miocene of Colombia. This animal shared many morphological similarities to opossums, to the point where it is thought to be part of Didelphidae, the group containing those animals, but later identified as an earlier member of Sporacidonta. Stylocinus was another Miocene Sporacidont genera of this group that's also viewed as a general outlier among the other members of this order. Is generally viewed as being part of Honda Delphidae like Honda Delphis, and both of these animals showed signs of omnivory which would have made them unique among the other hypercarnivorous Boracidons. Hathliocynidae consisted of small to medium sized animals with longer skulls. In appearance, these animals resembled the more slender members of carnivora such as foxes, weasels, and civets. Cladocyctes was one of the earliest genera of Hathliocynidae, resembling a weasel in appearance. Its fossil structure led to the early belief that this animal is arboreal, but it's now seen that though this animal is known to climb, it is not a primarily tree-dwelling creature. In addition, this animal is also able to dig, which would have served useful for hunting smaller animals. On the other hand, Pseudonotictes that was present in the early Miocene of Argentina just like Cladocyctes had more evidence that supported it having an arboreal lifestyle. Borhainoidea, while containing a range of different Sporacidont body types, was home to the largest of the Sporacidonts. With the evolution of this group, Sporacidonta began to start occupying the large mammalian carnivore niche that was otherwise vacant in South America at the time. Borhainoidea contained three different groups. The first of these groups was Proborhyenidae. This group was notable for containing the largest of the Sporacidons, Proborhyena. Evolving the late Oligocene of Argentina and Bolivia, this animal could clock in at around 153 kilograms or 339 pounds, with jaws powerful enough to crack bone. An interesting member of this group that predates Probor Hyena was Amerin Haringia of the Middle Eocene of Argentina. This animal sported a cat-like build and was historically believed to be phylogenetically close to the famous Thylacosmilus, perhaps even being linked to its earlier ancestors. 
However, these similarities were purely morphological, and it was later placed into its own group, more closely related to other proborhyenids such as the genus Callisto. Thylacosmilidae was another group inside Borhyenoidea and consisted of animals that strongly resemble the saber-toothed cats of the family Mycaridontinae. This was primarily due to their large canines, which is a good example of convergent evolution. Some other common physical traits of thylacosmilids were a short cranium and a large snout, as well as lower jaw phalanges for their upper canines. One of the earliest members of this group was Analictes of the Middle Miocene. At only 18 kilograms to 39 pounds, this is among the smaller thylacosmilids and would have likely fed on prey such as rodents or small reptiles. Later on, we would get the truly iconic members of Thylacosmilidae, such as Thylacosmilus and its sister genus Patagosmilus. These animals were known for having even more similar features to animals such as Smilodon, such as a long neck with more muscle insertions to help with the usage of its canine teeth and strong forelimbs. Behavior-wise, they were also similar to the larger saber-toothed cats, likely being ambush predators. There are a few differences of note, however. Animals like Thylacosmilus had relatively low bite forces among Sparacidonta, but their jaws could open even wider than the members of Macaridontinae. Just as Thylacosmilus could be seen as the South American analogs to the saber-toothed cats, the genera from the group Borhyenidae could be seen as the equivalent to hyenas that evolved elsewhere during the Cenozoic. These animals were notable for having extremely high bite forces and being able to crack bone. As a result, it could be assumed that they shared a similar lifestyle of scavenging to those animals. However, definitive proof about their predatory behavior is still unknown. The oldest member of this grouping was Australohyena antigua from the late Oligocene, and even these animals had the temporal musculature needed to crack the bones of prey. Another member was Arctodictes of the early Miocene, an animal which resembled earlier bears. In addition, there is Borhyena, which also looks strikingly similar to modern hyenas. There are a few animals that are part of Borhyenoidea that couldn't be easily put in any of these three groupings. One of these genera was the Miocene Lycopsis, a badger-like animal that is the most widely distributed of the Sparacinons. Its forelimbs are specifically designed for it to be able to grasp its prey. From the early Miocene, there was also Prothlacinus, an animal that resembled a wolverine in its body type and had a flexible vertebral column that would allow for height and jumping ability. As mentioned before, Sparacidons were found exclusively on the continent of South America. There, they shared their habitat with many other carnivorous animals, from reptile-like snakes and crocodilians to terror birds and later on placental and marsupial carnivores. Just as the Sparacidons could be found on a variety of habitats throughout South America, from savannas to forests to shorelines, these animals also consumed a variety of different species. A favorite of them were the caviomorph rodents that were endemic to South America. In addition, larger species were known to prey on notoungulate herbivores, and Sparacidons near the coast were known to have eaten penguins and other seabirds as well as their eggs. A popular theory for why the Sparacidons died out during the Pliocene has to do with the Great American interchange that occurred between North and South America when they connected to each other. Carnivores that were otherwise separated from the southern continent, from cats to dogs to bears, would now be able to migrate there and potentially take over the various niches occupied by the Sparacidon predators. In particular, many have believed the saber-toothed cat Smilodon to have occupied the niche Thylacosmilus once held, and the competition from this powerful cat would have been too much for the more ancient Metatherian. While this makes sense on paper, Smilodon and Thylacosmilus were actually separated by over a million years, since there is no fossil evidence for the saber-toothed cat on the southern continent until roughly 781,000 years ago, far after the Pliocene had ended and Thylacosmilus went extinct. Why did the Sparacidons go extinct then? There is a slew of other theories, from being outcompeted by reptiles and forest rocket terror birds, which are the actual top predators of the continent before its connection to North America, differences in prey groups throughout the Cenozoic, and even meteor impacts. In reality, it probably did boil down to carnivore and predators outcompeting the Sparacidons for their niches, although it isn't as clear cut as, say, Smilodon occupying Thylacosmilus's niche. Placental carnivores and placental mammals in general have a tendency to outcompete marsupials and metatherians wherever they go. This is why the continents where metatherians are present in great quantities today are the ones which have been geographically separated and isolated from placentals for a while. It's also why invasive species in continents like Australia, such as cats and pigs, are such a danger to the native marsupial fauna. Of course, it's important, like with all extinctions, climate change could have played a part for the decline of sporacidons during the Pliocene. Sparacidons are some of the most interesting of all mammalian carnivores during the Cenozoic, from their range of body types and niches, to their surprising convergence with other mammalian predators. This group is definitely a very fascinating one, and most of all, it should be noted that they are not marsupials. There were many other animals possessing these enlarged teeth, like the marsupial Thylacosmilus. I'm gonna be honest with you. I, I'm kind of misinformed on taxonomy.